I will now forever imagine myself as the chocolate Oreo cookie, Elizabeth. I don't know. But I think the center should be mint. It's not white. It's green. <laughs>
So I will second any of your motions so that at least the debate can happen. And I am grateful to her for that because um, because of that, I put motions on the table. I think it makes vision sometimes very uncomfortable that I put them on the table because it pushes things. But sometimes they find it very hard to say no once I've got it on the table. And so about two thirds of my motions have been passed. what one side on the other side is saying, especially if it's a vision motion and the NPA are bringing up from a legitimate point of view, I'm very proud of the fact that I've you know, managed to put amendments in that then get accepted and we end up getting consensus at the council table. But I think that's what we should be working at. In fact, I think we should be working at consensus in our city. And the fact that we don't have it, I think speaks loudly and clearly that we are not, the city is not, engaging citizens, listening to citizens, and incorporating what they have to say in the decisions made at the council table enough. Else what we would have is people coming to the council saying thank you. Thank you for that motion. Thank you for that piece of, of, of policy. Because it makes sense from our point of view. I think democracy and development are two critical issues, and I think both are not headed down the right path right now. The reason I say that is because motion after, especially in the public hearings, public hearing after public hearing, some of them go well, but then when controversial topics come up, citizens come forward, and in the majority, Say, this is not what we want. The rise development, the high rise development in Mount Pleasant, 1401 Comox in the West End, 955 East, East uh, Hastings in the downtown east side. There's a quite a list. And they're the majority of people. And when they say no, and in some cases they're not saying no, not ever. They're saying it's almost there, just give us a bit more time. Little mountain housing. Was well, another perfect example. I know that Jacobs is here, and it was so close to being something that the local community could really get behind. It was a small change that needed to take place, and there was an inability of my fellow council members to listen to those changes that would not have markedly altered, I think, the developer's end of the project, but instead would have made such a difference in terms of bringing down the height a little in that development that would have brought that community on board and we would have had just such a win-win and we didn't get it. So time after time, I'm faced with decisions and let me tell you what goes through my head. What goes through my head is exactly what I promised you. In running for office, I said to you in every decision, I will think of these things. Does this decision put people first? People ahead of developers. Does this decision reflect the community plans and the zoning that currently exists, which I believe is like a social contract between the city and the people who live in it? Does it, does it allow that, that plan developed by people to move forward in a fruitful way in that neighborhood, honoring the work that's been put into it and the vision that's in those plans? Number three, does this decision move us forward on uh, a path to solving some of the bigger issues? And I'll come back to that. Some of the bigger issues like global warming, climate change, like unaffordable housing and poverty in our city. And does this decision leave our, our children better off in the city? I would run every decision that I make by that screen in my head before I make the decision. And if I don't feel that democracy is honored, if I don't feel that the people have bought in knowing that it does indeed um, create in the decision a better neighborhood, a better future for their children, um, a response to the major problems we're facing, then I won't vote for something. 
oral, I actually always start by trying to amend it. Or at minimum, um, seeing if I can't get the motion deferred so that more discussion can take place and a better solution happen. Um, and, and, you know, what I get back from the vision counselors is, there's no time, we don't have time. Uh, we have to move on, we, this is so urgent and that's so urgent. I think, what is so urgent that you ignore democracy? What is so, there is nothing that is so urgent that you can't take a couple of more weeks, and that's all that some people have asked for, a couple of more weeks of consultation, um, so that they can feel that their input gets incorporated into the decision. We have to get democracy right at the same time as we also get development right. So. Um, for, for decisions um, without real public discussion or consultation over what the um, outcome decisions might be and in the decisions embedded huge major changes to the city including an interim rezoning policy that upzoned every arterial in the whole city, every arterial that a bus runs down. Um, plus 100 meters on the other side of it. Every shopping strip plus 500 meters around it uh, to higher density, um, to six stories from four in most cases. That's, that's what four stories is what it's, where it's at. But the most incredibly egregious thing is that that upzoning, that interim zoning policy came in without it being taken, neighborhood by neighborhood, area by area in the city, to have a discussion about whether this was right or wrong, um, whether it fit in their neighborhood plan or not, what it would mean in terms of the kind of development that they would start seeing along the arterials and the streets off those arterials in the neighborhoods that people live in. Um, so I, you know, I, I tried to delay it, failed, um, and, uh, and, and then voted, voted against that. Uh, to which I get from, from my vision colleagues, um, oh, Adrian Carr's against housing. Well, fuck nonsense, that is. Um, it, you know, because you want to get housing right, because you want to make sure uh, that, uh, that the housing that gets built is housing that actually works for people and in the neighborhoods that we have. And you, you're willing to fight and wait to get that doesn't mean you're against housing. I fought endlessly to get a definition of affordable housing that's consistent in this city. The ballpark and the, the, the goalposts keep changing. First it was, you know, so it was social housing. Affordable housing was to help those who were most at need. Uh, then it becomes housing within a certain uh, income bracket from 21,000 to 84,000. And a lot of it, I think, at the up -brand. Then it becomes, oh, all rental housing is affordable. Well, this is not the way to be planning. This is not the way to ensure that there is affordable housing. Um, you need to have a very clear and well-defined definition or well-defined objective in order to know how much progress you're making towards it. If you're not making progress, it's no good to then say, oh, well, you know, now it's all rental and now you've made progress. I mean, I, I think changing your definition in order to say that you're achieving it is the, is the wrong way to go. You know, you need to be very clear about what you're going for. If you're not getting there, then you try harder. You find different ways around it. You don't change the goal. In terms of, um, of the uh, uh, climate change issue, which I must admit is the biggest issue that we all face, um, I, there are several things that make me feel so good about the fact that I'm at that council table. We just passed council pass. I didn't vote for all the pieces of it, um, the Transportation 2040 plan. But interestingly, that plan, which was years in the work, came forward at, with an objective of two-thirds of trips in the city, two-thirds being by transit, foot, or cycling by 2040. That sounds good, right? And I asked the question, but if we have increased population and we have more trips overall, could we not end up with 
more car trips than, even though it's a lower percentage, more car trips in total and more greenhouse gases than we started off with. So we may have a, you know, a, a objective that says we're going to move more people into other modes of, of transportation. But overall, if especially we're a city that's destined to build, 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 which is what I see, not one development proposal has been turned down while I've been at the council table. So if it's build, 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 we get more cars, we get more people, um, then we're not going to end up in any way combating climate change. So I asked, I amended the, the, uh, the, the motion and ask that, that, that an equal objective be that we actually have in our transportation plan um, the objective of reducing greenhouse gas emissions um, so that we would meet greenhouse gas emission reduction targets by 2040, 33% uh, below 2007 levels. So, um, so at least we would know that we are at simultaneously getting there. So um, without me, would that have been on the table? Probably not. I mean, it's, it sort of makes you realize that electing one green can make a difference. Mm -hmm. and actually... <laughs> um, my final example that I'd like to give is, is the issue.